Hi there, boys and girls. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you some of the features that you have on your student side when you're using STEM scopes. I'm gonna go ahead and get logged in to a demo student account. Notice that the first thing that pops up on my page is going to be recent assignments that I have. These assignments have come from my teacher. So let's go ahead and look at these really quick. Some of the things that you should notice, this is the title of your assignment, and notice that as the teacher, they can leave you comments like this. Make sure that you read those because that's a way for your teacher to communicate with you. Now you will also see a due date, so you can see that these are actually due on August 28th. So I'm gonna jump into this Explore One Comparing Numbers. This is a third grade scope. So if you're not a third grader, that's okay. Everybody has the same features. So on this assignment, you will have some sort of directions at the top normally. And this one, like I said, is on comparing numbers. So on your student side, look at this. We are actually going to be using a virtual manipulative. These are going to be place value disks, and you're going to use them to compare the number of tickets that could be sold at your hometown stadium and Sanford Stadium. So that means I have to use this table at the top to help me with my answers down here. Now this says to change the setting from basic to place value on the lower right corner of the chart below. That's right here. So I need to read which ones I need. So I need to find my hometown stadium. So I, I think that that's some important information. So in normally when you're in class and you have a paper, sometimes you highlight or you underline what's important. You can do that online as well. If you highlight which words you think are important with your cursor, like this, you get a little box that pops up. So I'm actually going to highlight that because I know that that information is important. That's your little highlighter tool. And Sanford Stadium is important as well because that's the other number I'm going to use. So my hometown stadium has 75,000 seats. And Stanford Stadium has 92,746 seats. So down here, you would be able to use your place value disk to represent that number. I would be able to drag over 70,000. Five thousand. And then of course there's zero in those. And then down here, you would be able to use these features to fill in your answers. Now my other number is 92,746. So those are my two numbers represented. So now with that done, you can actually show your work on this page for your teacher. So you have a little toolbar here at the top that I wanted to cover with you. Okay, this one, this one allows you to grab objects after you have drawn them on there. This is your little drawing tool that you have. So notice I can make numbers. Now, let's say I messed up and I don't want that. You can easily come over here to the back arrow and then undo what you just did. This is a line tool that you can use. So notice that it makes straight lines. Now, if I don't want that again, I can just click the undo button. You also have a circle tool that you can use. Now with these, if you want to move them, you can toggle onto that one, like I said, and you can move that around. And again, you have a square, a triangle. Now this is a text box, it's pretty cool. You can actually click on that T and then click anywhere on the screen and you will be able to type your work. 
Now that's really big and that really doesn't fit where I want it to be. So let's say that I'm trying to type my number for my hometown stadium. Remember it, there was a seven. And if I want to move that, I can just do like that. Now if I wanna change the size of that seven, let's say I wanna make it bigger. Notice how I'm just grabbing that outside square and pulling it and closing it and opening it. So you can either type your work like this or you can get your draw tool and draw like the five whichever one you think you would like to use. All right, and this one was 90,000, 92,000, 746. So there is a statement down here, look at this. It says, write a statement that compares the number of seats in your hometown stadium with the number of seats at Stanford Stadium. Well, I think there's some important information here. I know I have to write a statement. So I'm, I know that that's important. Compares the number of seats. So in my hometown, which is this number, and in the Stanford Stadium. It says to use the greater than, less than, or equal to symbols in your stadium. So if you notice, it says explain how you know your statement is right. This explain is really important, boys and girls, to be able to justify your work. So I know that 75,000 is less than 92,746 because there is a 9 compared to a 7 in the 10,000s place, period. Now, constantly save your work as you're working through this just to make sure you don't lose anything and you would be able to go to that next page and then work on that next question that you have. Now, before I move on, I want you to notice this bar that you guys have here at the top. This is really important and it's going to have a lot of features that can help you. Let's say this is a little bit difficult for you to read. You can always increase that font size. So you have a lowercase a and an uppercase a. This one actually lets you manipulate how large or how small you would like to see the font. How cool is that? You also have the ability to turn on this little button. So if I toggle this on and I click that button, notice now I have a play button. So normally if you get things read to you or if you want something read to you, you can toggle this on and then just push play. Compare the number of seats in each set of stadiums. Now, if you don't want everything read to you, we completely understand it. You can simply highlight those words like I told you before. And notice I get this option that pops up again. I can push that speech button. Record the values in the place value chart. And so it just read that one section. So just in case you need some extra help when your teacher is not there to help you, you can definitely use that. Now this is a dictionary tool that we have here. Once you click on it, notice now you have a question mark. So if you were to click on some of these words, there would be a definition that pops up. So let's say I don't remember what the word compare means. I can click on it and now I have a little dictionary definition that pops up. That might be useful to some of you. Now, like I said before, this is going to be your highlighting tool. So you can highlight what you find is important. Your teacher will definitely like to see your thinking on that. And then this one is a comment tool. All right, so if you want to leave your teacher a comment in your reasoning, why you think something is the correct answer, you definitely can. In order to do that, you would do the exact same way when you're highlighting words. Okay, and in this option that pops up, you can add a little comment for your teacher and it gives them a little bubble. And then you can give your teacher a note, just like that, very easy, and click save. So now, when your teacher grades your work digitally, they would be able to see that you gave them a comment. All right, so let's say that I'm done with this assignment. 
I'm going to click turn in when I am finished. This is going to let my teacher grade my assignment now. So notice it's no longer under my assignments here, but if I look under my grade section, it's right here. So this very next tab is your grade. So when your teacher has graded your assignment and has turned it back into you, it'll, it'll give you your grade right here. But right now I see grade pending because my teacher hasn't graded it yet. Now you have a couple of other resources here. One of them is learning resources. Notice this student is in two classes. So if you look down here, you will see that there is a picture vocabulary. This is for science. These, th these two are for science. The next three are for math. And then those two are virtual learning experiences. If your teacher asks you to look at your picture vocabulary, you have that here. And you could just find which scope you are working on. You also have access to virtual manipulatives. So if you open this up, you can see that you have base 10 blocks. You have color tiles to work with here. You have fraction tiles, fraction circles, place value disks, like I used earlier. So you have a lot of different virtual manipulatives that you can use. And you also have your interactive practices. Now you do have a notes section. These are the notes that you are making on your pages when you are turning your work in. So you're, you can definitely see which notes you highlighted and if you've made any comments. Now visual glossary is pretty neat. Just in case you need to look at some of your vocabulary words. Notice I don't see anything right now because I don't have a letter selected. So let's say I was talking just about comparing and ordering numbers. So I want to see compare. I can toggle over to the C. And then I will be able to decide which words I want to see. If I want to see math or science. So right now I want to see just math words. And now I can look through these and see all of that academic vocabulary. Now, one of the last things that I want to show you are your accessibility settings. If you would like to change anything on your side, you're always welcome to. Now, normally when you're done working, you want to log out. So you would click on your name and then click on log out. Before I do that, I want to show you your accessibility settings. So if you notice here, you can change the size of your font. So right now I just have regular, but if you would like a larger font that helps your eyes while you're working on the computer, you can definitely change that here. Now you also have a default font, but you also have serif. So if this is better for you, you can just toggle that switch on. Now with looking at a screen, now with looking at a screen, you might hurt your eyes sometimes with looking at a white screen all the time. So some of you might want to toggle over to the high contrast. You can definitely try that. And this last one is really important. If you like to have some of the text read to you, you can change how fast or how slow it's being read. So this is regular. What do you want to do with your artwork? When this is slow. What do you want to do with your artwork? And then this one's really fast. What do you want to do with your artwork? Like so some students like to see when each word is actually read. So you can check this box and it's going to highlight those words for you. What do you want to? Once you make the changes that you want, all you have to do is click update accessibility settings. And now it's done. So boys and girls, I hope that this was helpful for you. Please use those embedded supports and show your work when you're working inside of STEM Scopes Math or STEM Scopes Science. Have a great day.